Learning objectives include what are fungi and what nomenclature we need to remember or memorize in order to um, study fungi. These are general features that relates to uh, fungi. They belong to the kingdom fungi. And nutritionally, or with respect to the requirement of their nutrients, they are chemoheterotrophs. All fungi use electron source from the organic molecules and also carbon dioxide from those organic molecules. So they are basically heterotrophs. They acquire nutrients by absorption from the cells or through the cells, and they reproduce both asexually as well as sexually. A few definitions. The word hypha is singular. If you add E at the end, it becomes plural and is pronounced as hyphae. So hypha is a single thread-like filament, like here. And a collection of hyphae is called mycelium. And similarly, mycelium is a singular. If you add A after I, M-Y-C-E-L-I-A, this becomes mycelia, and this is a plural. So that means collection of hyphae is called a mycelium, and plural is mycelia. And there is another word called thallus. Thallus basically is a collection of mycelia. So all these three words basically define thread-like uh, structure of the fungus or fungi. If combined, few uh, hyphae combine into mycelium, and if mycelia are combined, they give rise to thallus, which is a body of the fungus. Now here, all this collection, mini collection here, is mycelia, basically, mycelium. So if there are a bunch of those and they're all together, they will, will be called as the body or the thallus of the fungus. Fungi basically uh, are seen as mold, which we see as filamentous growth, or yeast. Yeast basically is a unicellular uh, fungus. They are non-filamentous form of the fungus. And mycology is the study of fungus or fungi. Some people say fungi, some say fungi, both are correct. So whatever you choose, whatever your decision, um, should be okay. These fungi, here, as you can see, that this bread uh, seems kind of tainted with some colored pigment. These are spores of the fungi, uh, which is the mold. And you might have uh, seen this, especially uh, in immunocompromised small kids and children, even in, in, in adults also who are immunocompromised, uh, you would see this whitish powdery stuff accumulated onto the, the tongue or in the oral cavity. This is typically yeast infection. So yeast are unicellular, uh, non-filamentous form of the fungus. So both these yeast and fungi include in the fungi, kingdom fungi. Now, if you further define hyphae, we see that there are two kinds of hyphae. One, you see them, the, this is a hypha, which has been split into small compartments or cells. And there is a partition, what we call a septum there. So this kind of hypha is called septate. Septate means that they are divided, they're split. There's a septum between the cells. And other kind is non-septate and is also known as coenocytic. Uh, it has obviously no uh, septum or no partitioning between the cells. There are, you see these blue dots, these basically are nuclei. As you can see, they could be 
uninuclear or multinuclear. As you can see here, there's one nucleus within this cell, and there are two here. So these cells could bear one nuclei or could bear two or three or multiple. Even those that have these partitioning, which we call septum, if you look closely, they have pores um, that are present in the septum. This is basic. This portion here is shown a septum with the pores inside. These pores basically are a way of communication between the two cells, between two adjacent cells. So there is a communication from this cell to this cell. So cytoplasm streams through this, these pores. Neutrons are absorbed from the cells, as I mentioned earlier, and then they are transported from one cell to the other, or vice versa, through these pores. There is another uh, division of these hyphae, which we call a, a vegetative hypha versus aerial or reproductive hypha. A vegetative hypha, as name indicates, that this is kind of root, you, would, you could say. Although there is no such definition or differentiation between the root and, and the, the, uh, the stem or other parts, they are almost the same. The job of the vegetative hypha or hyphae is to absorb the nutrients, while the aerial hyphae or hypha bears those reproductive spores. So there are two kinds of hyphae. One we already noted that they are based on their septum as septate or non-septate, and based on their job. Vegetative hypha absorb nutrients, while aerial or reproductive hypha they bear reproductive spores. And vegetative hypha, as you can see in this picture here, these are vegetative hyphae. And these colored black looking things, they are basically the spores. As you can see in this bread here also, it seems like a greenish color structure. These are again spores, and these are basically aerial hyphae that are bearing those spores. And vegetative form of the hyphae, they should be um, inserted into the medium where the nutrients are so that they can absorb the nutrients. So in summary, fungi, as you saw, that the, the nucleus is well-defined, so they are eukaryotic, and they are multicellular, except the yeast. Yeast are unicellular, and they're non-filamentous form of the fungus. And as we saw, there are septate and non-septate hyphae.